let's see what we can do here. There you go. Gee whiz, is that entirely necessary, Mercedes? Folks, we're back. Uh, we've got our part in the mail. Got a new old stock ignition switch and steering lock. Genuine Mercedes from eBay here a couple of days ago. I've given this uh, procedure some considerable thought and I've decided to uh, simply follow the book. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, if you've never done this before, stick with us. Uh, we're gonna go, at go through it step by step. If you have done it before, well, just, uh, you know, comment below and let me know what I did wrong and maybe uh, provide some useful tips and tricks for the rest of us uh, because I have not done it before. So I'm well, going to start off with the factory service manual procedure 46-40 part D removal and installation of complete steering wheel lock. And I'll put a picture of that in the video right there. So preliminary work for this is to remove the steering wheel, remove the instrument cluster, and remove the lower instrument panel, which I've already done. We are going to start off with removing the steering wheel, and that will take us to procedure 46-10. And the first step is to remove that Mercedes emblem with a tiny little screwdriver. Let's get busy. And we're going to do this without scratching anything or damaging anything in any way. Look at that. Okay, that'll come out of there. I'm going to need more than one small screwdriver, however. Goodness gracious. It's embedded in there. There's not any clips really. So I'm gonna, I got one screwdriver in here and I'm gonna hold it there and then I'm gonna take the other one and I'm kinda, kinda work it with a twisting action around and around. And that, and that look at that, worked pretty well. Huh, okay. Well, that was pretty cool. Okay. We'll put this someplace safe. Glove compartment. All right, so we're gonna get down in there. Get that screw out next. All right, we've got a uh, 10 millimeter hex head or Allen head, and we'll just see how well this goes. Of course not. Um, impact, yeah, let's do that. All right, we've got our impact gun on low here. Nope, let's take it up a notch. All right, let's take it up a notch. Well, this impact gun officially sucks. <laughs> I dropped my socket down in there. Yeah, that's funny. Okay, let's figure something else out. All right, I think I'm gonna fire that impact wrench. That, that thing just doesn't work. So I uh, reinstalled the, uh, the lock cylinder. Notice I didn't call it a cylinder lock. <laughs> the uh, steering wheel would actually be locked and uh, we're gonna try a breaker bar and uh, we're gonna see just how strong a Mercedes steering lock is. You know, the spec in the book says this nut, this screw in here is tightened down to 80 Newton meters, which is about 60 foot pounds, which is like psh, nothing, you know, to an impact wrench, but gee whiz. Let me get my breaker bar pipe. All right, I've got a three foot breaker bar pipe on the end of this affair. Let's see what we can do here. There you go. Gee whiz, is that entirely necessary, Mercedes? It's loose. 60 foot pounds my eye. So if you're wondering, leave the ignition switch, leave the uh, lock cylinder in place when you do this. Because I already had the lock cylinder out, so I wasn't going to reinstall it. I thought that was silly. I said, well, just use an impact. Not. Maybe if I use an impact that actually functioned. 
So yeah, they've got a bunch of Loctite on there. Clearly this bolt's never been out of the car. It's probably one of those one-time use deals. You can see it has a tapered head. All right, so I'm gonna mark the steering wheel's location in relation to the splines on the shaft so that when we reinstall it, we will know how it goes. All right, one steering wheel removed. Uh, steering wheel off, instrument cluster out next. All right, we've done that a few times. I think we can handle that without reading the book. So let's go get the special tool. I'll be right back. There we go, I had to modify my tool a little bit. There we go. The little hook on it was a little compressed, so I had to bend it out. I made it out of a coat hanger. <laughs> uh, I've actually got a new tool set coming in, but it's not here yet, so. All right, let me take the connections off the back of this thing and get it out of the way. All right, so we got this uh, wi the wiring harness from this switch. It uh, just goes straight down through the column and is literally right here next to the, uh, yep, that's it, <laughs> column. It's a 14 plug connector. And these connectors are pretty stiff, but they're usually uh, really uh, substantial, robust, I might say can withstand a little levering action with a screwdriver to separate them. All right, so the uh, combination switch instructions conveniently ignored the fact that there are two wiring harnesses instead of one. I'll show you that picture. The second one being the cruise control, of course. Uh, if you go look in the cruise control section, however, uh, it simply refers back to these instructions to remove the combination switch, which ignores the cruise control. And I find that refreshingly humorous for Mercedes. I just think that's a hoot. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Anyway, so there's two connectors. I'm gonna get this one off now. And uh, maybe more difficult. Uh, hopefully not, but I don't know. It's smaller. Where is it? If I can get my big old claw in there. Hey, I think I found it. All right. Yeah, so we've pulled this back through a little bit. So I can, or it could just fall out. You know, that's, that'll work too. Oh, that just, yeah, that just slips into the combo switch. Okay. So we'll take this. We'll set it in the back, back there. You know, I was wanting to paint the uh, the blinker stalk anyway, because all the paint had come off of it and it was faded. So I think we're gonna do that as part of this project. Just put a little black satin paint on it, I think. And again, I love these Mercedes electrical connectors. They're just so robust. Things are, for the most part in these cars, and I'm not telling you guys anything you don't already know, they're just meant to be fixed. They're just meant to be repaired. I lost a screw. Apparently not meant to be repaired by me. Oh, there it is. All right, come on out of there. All right, so we'll put our cruise control switch over there. This is the other half of the electrical connector. All right, we got all our electronics out of the uh, steering column there. I think the hard part is over. Hopefully I didn't jinx myself. All right, let's find out what our next procedure is. We've uh, accomplished all of our recursive procedures in preparation of removing the steering wheel lock. All right, it just says remove cover. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just slides right off. Had a little resistance at first, but 
No big deal. Kind of kind of dusty down in there. We'll clean that. This is kind of cool, actually. There we go. That's what we got. And our light fell over. And you can see the uh, pesky steering wheel lock thing back in there, kind of. But uh, we'll get to it. We're almost there. Okay, so now we're back to where we started from, and that is to remove the lock cylinder. Now, uh, you saw that in part one of the video, so I'm not gonna show it again. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this lock cylinder back out. All right, so the next step, we got the uh, lock cylinder out, and the next step is to take off the, the uh, connector off the back of the ignition switch right there. Hello, Thing. Thank you, Thing. Hey, how about that? That was easy. There's nothing to this job. It's not that hard. You just gotta know where stuff is. Well, I take that back. <laughs> Getting that bolt off was pretty tough, but other than that, so far, it's, you know, it hadn't been that bad, really. All right, the next step is to remove control cable 37. I'll put a picture of this in the video. Screw off on vehicles with parking position key lock. I tell you what, there's nothing in this in this car that prevents that gear shift from moving. I don't know if that is that what they're talking about. Parking position key lock. So if you're in park, I don't. I think I can. You can turn the key on this stupid car in any any position here, right? <laughs> I don't think this car has that. There's a module on the side of the, uh, this is the steering lock ignition switch assembly, and there's a, there's a doohickey right here with a, apparently a couple of vacuum lines on it. Here's an area when you run across, you know, vacuum lines in a car somewhere, especially under the dash, you don't want to crack them, folks. So we're going to get a little flat blade screwdriver, and we're going to ease it down there in between that that uh, rubber bit and the, and the assembly and just back those two hoses off of there. So I'm gonna do that next. All right, the next step is to loosen the hex head bolts here. And there's one over there as well. They're 13 millimeter according to the procedure. The bottom steering spindle corrugated tube is extremely sensitive to lateral forces. For this reason, move jacket tube out of position carefully and as little as possible, okay. Loosen hex head bolts on the upper mount for jacket tube, okay. Pull jacket tube downward slightly to remove and reinstall the steering wheel lock. All right, so that's the corrugated jacket tube, I'm assuming is what they're talking about. And they're saying it's uh, pretty delicate, so you don't wanna mess around with it too much. As far as I can tell, there's a bolt right there. But the procedure says nothing about disconnecting this. All right, let's just loosen these bolts. It says loosen, it doesn't say remove, it says loosen, so. All right, that's loose. Okay, that one's loose. All right, so I don't know what this is or which part of the uh, procedure it is, but there's a little connector here. I'm gonna get that off there next. Loosen mounting clamp 15 is the next step. Okay. The next step in the procedure is to loosen this clamp right here. There we go. That 10 millimeter bolt right there. We're going to loosen that next on that uh, clamp. I think that's on the uh, ignition switch steering lock assembly itself. All right, got that uh, clamp loosened now. All right, so I think the uh, translation of the uh, instructions is, uh, I've got them on my phone here. There's a lot of translation issues in this Americanized version, English version of the uh, service manual. It says, it says loosen, it doesn't say remove. So I was trying to be, you know, kind of exact about it, but you know, maybe a little too exact. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Let's see what, what does that do? for us you see that there's another bolt back here about midway down the steering shaft 
before it goes into that corrugated, I'm assuming it's a flexible thing for probably for crash safety. I know, I'm guessing, I really don't know. But there's another bolt back there, so that's not gonna come down. That And that other bolt is not in, not in the instructions at all, so. I kept thinking, okay, we're gonna lower this, right, in my mind. Um, I think really all they wanted to do was give you this little bit of movement right here. Uh, I kept thinking we were gonna take this thing and lower it really far down, but you can't do that because this ignition and steering wheel lock assembly is right here and there's a big piece of dashboard in the way, right? So there's no movement here. I'm not gonna take that bolt off back there. The battery went dead, I had to hook up the power to it. So I don't know where we left off there, but uh, we got this amount of play and I got those two bolts removed. I got that, this clamp loosened here. And uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna go with that and see what happens, just see how it goes here. Next up is ne step nine, press a resting pin, pull steering wheel lock slightly out of mount in jacket tube. Turn and remove completely from mount in jacket tube. Okay, well let's find something to press that pin with then. There is a pin right there, you can see it, okay. We're gonna press that in, and uh, this steering uh, lock similar just will move that way, and everything will just work out, you know, magically. It'll just boom, it'll just, be, it'll just come right out of there. We'll get a smaller screwdriver. Oh, they told you to turn it slightly so that the pin wouldn't slip back into the hole, I guess, is what they, there's the reason they told you to turn it slightly. Well, that's not a tight fit at all. <laughs> I wonder if I should turn it downward. Let's, let's do that. Yeah, there we go. Let's turn it downward. Let's see what that gives us. I think that's going to work out. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. I've got something else. Nope. I got anything else on there? Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. We were successful, folks. Let's see. Get the inspecting spectacles on. I kept, ex I kept expecting to look in, down in here and see kind of see some kind of a horror story. But what I see instead is factory goodness. Um, I don't know what, if anything, is broken about this. I kept expecting to see something, you know, something fall out of there. Might be a little wear right there. It's got lubrication on it. Interesting. Uh, you know what? I'm just, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna assume it's broken and put the new one in. All right, let's do that. All right, so the new ignition uh, module, steering lock, whatever you call it, doesn't come with this little control connector on it. I need to transfer it to the new one. All right, I got this control connector out of the uh, ignition module. And really what, you, what you're dealing with here is, is a little micro switch and a couple of connectors there. This thing is literally pounded into place. There's no trick to it. There's no clip. There's no release. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that that piece of metal down in there slides back and forth and, and actuates this micro switch here. I'm gonna check the impedance of this thing. I'm gonna check whether or not this switch works. I got a piece of plastic uh, that I had laying around and I put it here on the connector end and I just, and I tapped on it with a hammer. <laughs> Literally, that's what I did to get it out of there. And you can see that these, it has these little plastic nubs on either side and uh, a little gap in the plastic here and this compresses Right, so it's a it's a press fit. So that's how that comes out. You just tap it with a hammer. You want to tap on the connector end, believe it or not, and uh, push it out. Okay. All right. So that's how that comes out. All right, we got the uh, ignition um, in position one. I uh, put the uh, lock cylinder in position one and removed it, and that retracts the uh, the steering lock thing. Let's put the new one in now. So I'm going to reach underneath there, press that little button in to get it past the edge of the uh, housing. 
All right, we got that release button, release pin, whatever you want to call it, past the appropriate point. I think, I think we're there. We just got to get it, get that uh, pin to line up. There we go. Kind of that new one's kind of a tight fit. She's in there. Let's crank her up. <laughs> I think I'm going to take a lunch break. All right, folks, we'll be back in just a little while. All right, so uh, we're going to start putting this thing back together. Now, I'm just going to kind of wing it here. Let's go ahead and tighten up the clamp. We'll do that first, I guess. I think we're going to try to get our clamp in a position that is conducive to uh, getting a tool onto it. I'm just going to hand tighten it. It was on there way, way too tight. Yeah, that's that's plenty. Let's do the fiddly stuff next, I guess. Start uh, connecting some wires and things. Get this one plugged in. Probably ought to, I should have plugged this one in before I put it on. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it here. Yeah, there we go. Let's connect up those vacuum lines next. All right, let's go ahead and put our uh, main support bolts back in that hold the steering column up. Those don't have to be. They just, it just doesn't have to be that tight. I'll put them on there with probably 25 or 30 pounds of torque, something like that. Just guessing. Have no idea what it was. Just guessed at it. Yeah, we're nice. We're all firmed up now. So I'm debating on using my original lock cylinder, even though I think the original key is a little sticky. Yeah, it, it's... I'm not convinced that's a problem. Although others say it is a problem. So this replacement one is just so chintzy. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. That definitely that key definitely hangs up. It just it won't it won't go in there straight away. You gotta you know, you gotta force it in. They say that's a bad sign, really. I guess it's a worn key. These two these cars are too too old to get a original key cut, I think, from the dealer. I saw a part from Molly that had this this style of Mercedes key cut. It was a part but it's no longer available. I looked on I looked all, all over the internet and that they're all sold out or back ordered or whatever. The, this more modern style looking key, which is eh, kind of chintzy, is what you find everywhere. And the ones that have this style are well you just can't find them right now this lock cylinder feels so much better it has these nice little clicks in it i don't is it supposed to click <laughs> it feels like a precision piece of machinery this one does you know That way, it's a little harder. Okay, let's just go new. Let's do that. Where is my cover? Let's go ahead and get this thing back in there. Slip that down in there. Get it over to position one. Get a tool in there. Yep, see if you go too far, you can't get it all the way. You gotta back it off, so. All right. Uh, about right there. That's position one. Pull that guy out. Then you push it in a little bit and then you can do some stuff. Yeah, look at that. pretty good there folks all right there is no need in me filming the reassembly of this thing unless i come across something that's a little odd 
that I'd like to, sh that I think would be fascinating, and then we'll film that. But for the most part, I'm going to go ahead and just put this thing back together. We'll be back in a little while. All right, so uh, one mildly interesting thing, the I guess the sun and the uh, oxidation got to the uh, blinker stalk eventually, and it was just all, uh, it was powdered up, and it, it looked horrible. All the paint was gone, and the, the substrate beneath it was just turning into powder. So I, I sanded it down with some like 150 grit. It was pretty nasty. I taped up the assembly, and uh, we're going to shoot this thing with uh, matte black. Should be fine. So I'll probably put two or three coats on that, let it dry, and then we'll start putting the car back together. All right, folks. Got everything back together. Got the steering wheel torqued down to the 60 foot-pounds. Ah. 55 I cheated a little bit the uh, the bottom cover I'm gonna leave that off because there's a piece of plastic underneath there over home the left hand side that's broken and I want to fix that later so I'm gonna leave that off for now so I have some interesting news for you that's the wrong key <laughs> all right now let's start it up All right, everything works as it should. The, uh, so here's the story. No change whatsoever, other than I need the new faceplate. Still drags. No change. You gotta wiggle it around. Once you get it in the sweet spot, it's all right. You move this steering wheel a little bit, it still drags. Now, before it was like really bad, but sometimes it's still really bad. Like right there, I had to, I got a high resistance, right? I can't turn it. I cannot turn it. Okay, so wiggle the steering wheel. Now, did it now. Okay, there you go. So, what does that say? Uh, was not the lock cylinder. It was not the steering lock. It was not the ignition switch. It's in the steering column where this steering lock, this little pokey outy thingy, shoots out into the steering wheel and locks it, right? So this thing is getting into a bind in the steering wheel. That's my opinion. I don't know for sure. If you guys know better, please comment below. I would be willing to hear your comments uh, by all means. <laughs> However, I would say that the uh, outcome of these two videos is pretty much a level playing field. We gained no ground other than fully understanding how to remove and install a lock cylinder now. Fully understanding how to remove and reinstall a steering lock and ignition assembly. So I guess those are the two benefits of these two videos. I learned a lot doing all this. But the end result was basically nothing because the problem remains. So I'm going to make an assumption that says there's something, maybe there's some debris. Maybe there's some worn metal up inside the steering column uh, where the steering lock engages with it. Maybe the steering column is not adjusted properly. I mean, we, we jiggled it around quite a bit, as you recall, but not a whole lot. And of course, we bolted it back to where it was when we, when we started. There's a little bit of play in these two bolts up here. Maybe I could loosen them and move the steering wheel around a little bit, and that might help the situation. That might free us up a little bit. But I think maybe I'll save that for a vlog video a little later on. But for right now, I think parts one and two of this video series on removing and reinstalling the lock cylinder and removing and reinstalling the steering lock and ignition assemblies we're going to call this a two-part series, folks. All right, I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. You guys know where it is. So you guys have a good one, and remember to enjoy maintaining your classic Mercedes.